business, uh, fundamentally you need to use whatever it is that you have. And I don't necessarily know the financial what you have, yeah. but what is it that you're good at? Okay. In my case, first and foremost, I've always been an entrepreneur. Uh -huh. um, I've always liked business, and I've always uh, will always read the sports section first, and then the, the business section, uh -huh. and then the rest of the world. Um, so business has always been in my blood. I love business. I love the whole. I love the aspect of ascertaining what the customer wants and what the problem is, and then you come up with a product. And so when you when you say uh, an idea, yeah. our idea has always been to be a problem solver. Mm -hmm. And so when you go into whoever it is, um, so let's say you're coming into this office and you say, well, you know, what are the five problems that Altec has? As opposed to, here's five products that Altec might need. What are the five problems that Altec has? What is the one biggest problem? And so forth. Uh -huh. and, and you don't come away with a solution. You come away and say, let me work on that. And then perhaps you come back with a solution. So we've always been problem solvers. Uh -huh. um, and I can list any number of our products. Sure. They've all come from solving a problem. Uh, I'm not an nutritionist. Uh -huh. I didn't grow up on a farm. Uh, if I milked a cow, I milked it because my dad brought me perhaps to an uncle's farm, and I can't remember it ever, yeah. a cow. Uh -huh. um, I didn't learn to ride a horse, uh, so I'm not an agricultural guy. So what am I doing in an agricultural industry? And so, and the answer is, I went out with my background, with what I know, and I know fermentation, I asked the question, okay, what are your problems? When you ask people what their problem is, yeah. they'll answer. And when you ask people uh, what their expertise is, they will always share it with you, always. We're all so proud of our expertise, yeah. and they'll yeah. share it with you. Sure. And from that knowledge of their expertise, uh -huh. the knowledge of their problem, uh -huh. and then you try to marry your expertise, and if you don't have expertise, then you go and get expertise to come back and say, i got a problem. Uh, well, first of all, our first business, you, you start with what you know. Yeah. And my business is in beer, and my business is in fermentation, okay. and alcohol, etc. Uh -huh. So, Alltech started okay. in the ethanol industry, in the renewable fuels industry. Okay. And in the early 80s, actually, late 70s, early 80s, everybody was concerned about it. What's going to happen? Oil yeah. prices were hundred dollars a barrel, hundred fifteen, hundred twenty dollars a barrel. If you could get oil, yeah. We had the hostage crisis. In, oh, that's right. In, uh, in Iran mm -hmm. and so forth. And so uh, everybody's saying we've got to be energy independent. Yeah. And so forth. So first thing we addressed was we can make ethanol, and we knew how to make ethanol. That's my, my master's, my PhD is in yeast and so forth. And so what we do, we went out. We listen to people who are trying to build ethanol plants and having a clue how to do it, and we provide them with the expertise to do that. Okay. And at the same time, we provide them with products which would help them ferment better, etc. Yeah. So I, you're providing, you know the problem, in yeah. case lack of expertise, uh -huh. and you know the solution, whatever it was, yeah. that you have. Um, but the transition, yeah. entrepreneurs have to be able to, to change ship. Yeah midstream if necessary Absolutely. and uh, not get wedded to what you're doing and, and uh, you know, look to the future and so in the mid oh after about two or three years i said i'm not so sure that this renewable fuel for me is going to go the way i think it's going to go. yeah yeah and i was right yeah um it went up and some of the big guys stayed in it but it was a further 20 years before oh, yeah. it came back so what did we do in the meantime well, I'm, out in the, I'm out in the field, I'm out in the um, agricultural area, I start calling on feed companies, they'll make the feed, you ask the question, ah, what do you do, okay. and so you get their problem, and then... I see how this is. Somebody who invents uh, oh, I don't know, new widgets or whatever, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe that's the that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Those things tend to be fads. The things yeah. which, which have sustainability are those which or addressing real problems. So, uh -huh. in my case, what did I know? Yeah. And why did I go and study these? Yeah, it's yeah. called the job. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. That's perfect. <laughs> I love it. And, uh, 
that's the rather than getting a job, which yeah. getting an education which didn't give you a job. Yeah. I got an education which gave me a job, and I worked in a brewery as a, a youngster, uh, part time. Yeah. Um, so I knew about brewing to a certain degree. I was sure. sure I come from a, a family that never had a drink in their life. So, okay. So I know right. exactly come from a, um, a beer drinking, beer yeah. slugging yeah. Uh, sure. family. But I wanted to make sure that whatever my education, well, first of all, I'm going into when you do your degree. Yeah. Um, I found I had a passion for biochemistry, and I like biochemistry, and okay. I like the process, I like the stories, because uh -huh. biochemistry is all about stories and theories. Uh -huh. And then, having worked in a brewery, I decided, okay, well, I'll follow that up, I'll come to find out. Uh, nobody in Ireland had ever done a formal degree in brewing. Really? Period. Despite the fact that they've been brewing beers for hundreds of that years. It seems like the, big, the biggest irony in history that no one has... They should, they should have like the University of Brewing in headquarters. University Ireland. of the drinking of the beer. Yeah, that's true. They <laughs> probably do have one of those. The <laughs> University of the making of the beer. That's fair. So I went ahead and I did. Uh, I ascertained where you, there were two brewing schools. Yeah. Globally, two brewing schools. Wow. One was in Great Britain, and one was in Belgium. And went there, and I thought, okay, now I'll do a master's degree because that'll enable me to come back to Ireland. Mm -hmm. I never intend to leave Ireland. Yeah. Go back to Ireland and have and have a job. And, you know. You have grown up in a country where there was lots of jobs. When you grow in a comp up in a country where there are no jobs, yeah. you better be sure you go for the right job, like yeah. a doctor. I have a brother who's a doctor, and another brother who's an architect. Yeah. But these were, you know, th there were jobs. Yeah, yeah. And they, the architect knew that he would have work, and yeah. I'll, I'll the medical, 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 eventually. The medical yeah. guy knew that yeah. he'd have work, and so forth. So when you, when you move away from those, you go into mainstream business, as it were. Yeah. You better have something which is different. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Um, something which is different in brewing gave me something which is different. The masters gave me something which yeah. is different. And then I decided, well, I better finish the PhD. And then it was sort of a jaundice view, frankly, of the PhD uh -huh. um, because I didn't feel that it was worth them three years or four years or five years. Forget it. Yeah. It's not worth that. Um, so I, so I said it to a, a fast course yeah. through my PhD. Uh -huh. Got those finished, but it was always. It's really always about trying to make yourself uh, either through your education or uh -huh. trying to trying to make yourself different from the other day. So I was going to do I was doing consulting, mm -hmm. and I was trying to generate. Was it just you? I'm just sorry. Me. Just you. Oh, I'm okay. okay. Good. I'm a secretary. Okay. Um, the crucial thing I say to everybody going into this is yeah. have a secretary. Okay. Don't just do it yourself. Have a secretary. Have an office. Yeah. Have a have a telephone number. Have a, you know, you've got to have that image that you're going to survive. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing worse than, in fact, just being a one-person show. Yeah. You are a one-person show. But, but they can't think that you are. Yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, the car you drive is important. You can't be coming in in a Mickey Mouse car. Okay. Now, you, you certainly don't want to come in in, uh, in some fancy, fancy, fancy car. Uh -huh. Although, since I was traveling all over the United States, literally within months, I was driving a Mercedes because it was so reliable, and I was literally driving from the East Coast yeah. to the West Coast. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, but consulting was providing the cash flow. Okay. Cash flow is the crucial thing yeah. about the business. Yeah. Um, but equally, as the consulting was coming along, you're developing other products, you're solving solutions, uh -huh. and my solutions were all based on what I knew. Okay. And the solutions, and the, as you got to know the people, uh -huh. They came to you for the solution, uh, and the trick then is yeah. to make your solution a product. Yeah, that makes sense. Because then that is is continuity. Yeah, it's scalable. Yeah, much uh, easier. Well, it's not so scalable. It's continuity. So what do you mean by that then? Well, if you're a consultant, you have one thing to sell. Yeah. Consultancy. Okay. And you can only sell it once. <laughs> it's true. And so once he knows it, he knows it. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a problem solver, yeah, and you're solving the problem for the process. Okay. If that process is an ongoing process, then you have a product to sell them for that ongoing process. That makes sense. So, uh, I tell a, one example. Uh, one Saturday morning, we got a call from I got a call from somebody down in Tennessee, and at this stage, we had about five people, five, six, seven people. Okay. And uh, they had a problem with their fermentation. Uh huh. So, I think you want to do such and such and such and such. And what we need to do is have a food, yeast food for you, 
and uh, needed written so much that was. So we worked out how much he needed. And he said, that's great. And it's Saturday morning. Okay. And um, we'll need 15,000 pounds of that. 15,000 pounds, huh? seven ton. Yeah. And when will you need it? This afternoon, that's fine. Okay, we'll have it for you okay. this afternoon. We had not a single raw material. We had a little blender. Yeah. Well, we, were going to, uh, we were going to get it to Loudoun, Tennessee that afternoon. Thank you very much. Will be done. So that's an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur now will find a way to do it. So I had. Yeah, what did you do? Well, we I had mean, the 10 ingredients we were looking for. Southern States had half a dozen of them. I got some of them from Kroger's. I got some of them this, that, the other. I knew what I was going, looking for. Yeah. And I knew full well I could never get 15,000 pounds that afternoon. I knew that. Okay. But I also knew full okay. well that they would not need 15,000 pounds that afternoon. Even though that's what they asked for. Even though that's yes. Okay, all right. But that's 15,000 pounds will last them. Three, four, five days, whatever, and you that. Oh, so you had a three day time on no, I didn't. They wanted fifteen thousand pounds. Okay. Fifteen thousand right. pounds is what you're going to don't make your problems. Mine is a fundamental. Sure, sure. Yes, sir, we will get them there. So we we uh, went out, um, a colleague of mine that just died a few weeks ago. Uh -huh. And uh, he went here, went there, then we mixed it up and that afternoon he left out in his car with a U Haul with 7,000 pounds on the way to Loudoun, Tennessee. Holy cow. And we delivered the 7,000 pounds. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, we were working on the next 7,000 pounds. Okay. And if we'd only made 2,000 pounds, we would have left that afternoon with 2,000 pounds. But you know, you entrepreneurs find a way to make it happen. Yeah. That's your job. I love it. Um, and your job is, uh, is to do, the faster you do it, the faster you identify the problem, the faster you, you find a solution to the problem, obviously the more successful yeah. you're going to be. But that guy, every Tuesday, he would have a delivery of 15,000 pounds for probably two years, two and a half years. What are you most proud of? My people. Okay. What about that, really? Period. We choose well. Uh -huh. We have great people. Mm -hmm. Fantastic people. Mm -hmm. I defy you to find um, better people than all types of people. We have brilliant people. And, and they show it in so, so many ways. Um, when the World Equestrian Games came about and there was a help required to run the games. What do we know about running the games? Nothing. Yeah. Zero. <laughs> what games have we ever run before? <laughs> Zero. It's <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. I don't know what I think about it. All we did was just run, run the most important run. Uh, event in America this run. month in 2010. And, uh, and we took our people. This place was deserted. Yeah. We had probably the best part of 100 people yeah. out there. Billy was out there um, either writing tickets or delivering tickets. Uh -huh. um, Nathan Holman, our CFO, was yeah. issuing tickets. Um, okay. Danny Haney was making sure that all the toilets were all cleaned and, and we'd have a list of And he's night. not your janitor here, he's, he, he has a different job. He's not a professional he's toilet guy. He's, the, he's not a professional toilet guy. He is the global director of production. Okay, wonderful. Thanks. Wow. We've worked for 20 plus years. Wow. Um, but we make the list in the morning, what to do, and boom. Um, we, we brought to the games uh, an enthusiasm yeah. amongst the volunteers. And yeah. so we went around those volunteers. And yeah. the volunteers, but they're, our people yeah. love people, yeah. and I love my people, yeah. and they in turn were loving the volunteers. So, so every morning they brought donuts to the volunteers, in the wow. afternoon they brought something else. Uh -huh. and, and then they put a lanyard around the volunteers' neck, the lanyard was hanging, and they said the three S's of running a successful game. Okay. What are I don't know. Smile, smile, and smile. Smile, smile, smile. Oh, I, can, all, I can even remember that one. All the journal, all the... Um, Volunteers had that. So yeah. when you ask what we're proudest of are our people. Yeah. You go to see our people in Japan and, and you go out and you know, karaoke with them or you go to see our people in yeah. in India. Yeah. They're all the same. Really? They're all the really? same. Wow. There's an Altec ethos about them, there's an Altec culture. They smile, they like people, they're fun, uh -huh. um, they get up and sing with you. Yeah, uh, yeah. But the following morning, yeah. they're no, cold, they're, yeah. stone, sober, yeah. and they're back to business. Wow. Business is fun. Yeah, I agree. Life is fun. I love it. And so long as you 
if you want to stay in business mm -hmm. and have fun stay in business so be fast mm -hmm. have fun mm -hmm. and surround yourself with people who challenge you yeah and for heaven's sake you know uh, make sure you don't have somebody said to um, save me from crazy bosses and so forth and don't be a crazy boss and don't, yeah. and don't forget my mom used to say never forget yeah. where you came from yeah never forget where you came from and so so long as you do that mm -hmm. um, I think in fact you'll be successful mm -hmm. and remember it's not about money it's never about money mm -hmm. your people have to have a good salary mm -hmm. but it's more important that they be recognized mm -hmm. yeah. we're all about recognition yeah. you think coach Calipari you think it's the money? Heck no, it's it's the recognition. It's yeah. the it's the, the associated with a winning program that he's put together and so forth. Yeah, uh, he makes more money than his father did in his lifetime. I can tell you that because he told me that he makes more money than his father did in five lifetimes. Uh -huh. That's not why. That's wise. not uh -huh. why he's doing it. And this is not why I'm doing it. Uh -huh. You know, uh, we're. Um, 500 plus million dollar corporation we grow at 20 percent per annum uh, we've got lots of exciting things happening yeah um, but it's not about money yeah Nathan Holman our CFO is not in here for the money and if he is he's in the wrong place yeah. Billy Fry is not in here for the money and if he is he's in the wrong place he should be going back working with his dad and yeah. so forth it's about fun uh -huh. um, and leave your ego outside yeah and I think it was Ronald Reagan or maybe it was Truman I don't know who said it but if you let somebody else, if you're always prepared to let somebody else have the credit, yeah. you'll be successful.